What's up everybody, it's Joe with Jade Lake Photo and today I wanna to take an older iPad, this is an iPad Air first generation, and I wanna compare it to the iPad Pro 10.5 from 2017 to see how well older hardware works editing in LumaFusion. All right, so I've done a lot of comparisons on my channel uh, from different pieces of hardware. I just did one on the GoPro versus the iPhone. Uh, and in normal situations, I'm really just kind of looking to see if you've got one thing in your pocket, what's the best thing to have, right? Uh, should you carry around the Ronin and the DSLR or will the GoPro suffice? Should you get the GoPro or is your iPhone or Galaxy phone gonna do a really good job? Those are the kind of questions I'm normally answering. Today, what I wanna try and do is figure out whether or not with older hardware, um, you can get the same job done editing footage on the go. So this isn't so much a head-to-head -head comparison as it is really just checking out to see what you can and can't do with an older device. I have my iPad Pro 10.5 from 2017. This is the 256 gig non-cellular model. This is the iPad that I have done pretty much all of my previous LumaFusion editing videos on. This is an iPad Air, first generation. This iPad came out in 2013. So this iPad is, um, is six years old. So I'm going to load it up with the exact same footage. I am going to try and create the exact same project of clips. And I am going to do my best to check just the basic feel of the editing software, make sure that there's no features that are missing, and then uh, check the export to see how long it takes and just kind of do a general comparison. Okay, so I just did about 10 minutes uh, worth of editing on the iPad and the iPad Pro uh, and everything actually went really well until uh, two things happened. Number one, it looked like the media that I was using on the iPad, the first gen um, iPad Air, was not downloaded. So when I went to go add some color correction, it, it wouldn't work. Um, so then I tried to stop the screen recording that I was doing uh, and the screen recording just didn't go anywhere. So about 10, 15 minutes worth of recording on the iPad disappeared. I have it on the iPad Pro and I have it here on my Mac that I'm recording now with my Logitech uh, C920 uh, webcam, but it, it did not um, actually show up on the iPad. So I'm gonna finish downloading this media and then I'm gonna hop back in and see what the deal is with this uh, iPad's ability to record screen. I'll probably do that for about five minutes and then test it. Uh, and if I'm still having that problem, I will probably plug the iPad directly into my MacBook uh, in order to uh, record the screen via QuickTime as opposed to using the built-in screen record function in iOS. Uh, again, uh, I lost all the recording footage that I had on this iPad uh, as a result of it not saving. So. Um, so I'm just gonna do my best to kind of get through this here and kind of show you the things that I've found uh, before, uh, which is that on both iPads, scrubbing through these clips uh, was not very difficult. I mean, really, if you look here, if I start back at the beginning of this clip with the iPad Pro and then also with the iPad, and then scrub through with each iPad equally, you'll notice really not that much of a difference. Um, now, the iPad Pro is, of course, able to play back at 120 frames a second. So as I take this clip, which was shot at 60 frames a second, and play it at an increased speed as I drag through, the iPad Pro, of course, can display more of those frames as its display is more capable. But the iPad Air um, honestly seems to be doing just fine uh, as we scrub through. Uh, the other thing that I did was I went ahead and set start and stop points and then scrubbed to the point that I wanted to actually set an end point, and then went ahead and uh, dropped that clip into my timeline. This is my Instagram handle, at jblakephoto, go ahead and check me out. And on both of them, I've got a animation, a keyframe animation, taking that text from the left side 
and just kind of scrolling it over to the right. Now, you will notice that as we kind of scrub through the timeline that the iPad, the iPad Air, is not moving as quickly, but I don't feel like there's a lot of lag. It's definitely dropping frames, but it seems to be doing it very efficiently. Also, uh, I've gone through and cut these clips up into uh, a bit of a speed ramp. So my first clip is 50% speed, uh, which is actually back to its native 60 frames per second. Um, the next one is at uh, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second at double speed. The next was at 400% speed, then back down to 100% and then back to 50% at its native speed. And you can actually see here, if we go back to the beginning and we play them both through, just to see the quality here. It took a couple of seconds for the iPad Air to kick in. Uh, but we'll continue scrolling through here. The other thing that you'll notice is that I have added a color correction effect. Uh, it's actually a high contrast effect to that first clip. And honestly, the iPad Air seems to be playing it just fine. I'm not having any issues. Um, so now let's go back to the beginning of these clips and I'm going to select the other clip, uh, the other clips in this particular um, uh, timeline that we have and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. So I'm setting that high contrast on both of them and then I've been increasing. Now the other thing I was doing was I was adding some vibrance uh, to here. We were taking it to about 35 on the vibrance setting right about there. We'll do the same thing on the iPad Pro. Boom. And then we will go back. Okay. And then if we scrub through here, just that one clip. It really honestly looks like that iPad uh, is doing really, really well in terms of applying these color corrections. Okay, so now I have applied that color correction to each of the clips in our timeline. Uh, and now really the big question, how long is it gonna take to export these videos. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the export button. We're going to hit it both at the same time here. Okay. I'm going to hit share movie, share movie. I'm going to share it to photos and share it to photos. Okay. Now, uh, the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set these both to be the same setting. I'm going to set this to 1080p, uh, because that's what it was filmed at. We're going to set 30 frames a second. We're going to do standard video quality. And I'm gonna do, it looks like, now I have some advanced setting options here. I have the ability to encode this in H.265 uh, in HEVC because this iPad Pro has hardware accelerated uh, H.265 uh, encoding. I'm gonna switch it back to H.264 since I really want this to be kind of a head to head. Um, and we'll do video and audio, we'll do 48K, MP4, normal video, export is gonna be 22.06 seconds. Everything else looks identical. So it looks like we're doing okay. So file size is gonna be 70 meg. There's three gigabytes available on this one. There's 204 gigabytes available on this one. This is the 256 gig iPad. This is a 16 gig iPad. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the export button in three, two, one. Okay, and the iPad Pro is done. But looking at the iPad, looking at the iPad Air, it's a little slow. But I wouldn't call that terrible. And it's done. All right, so I think like fourth time's a charm here. Um, definitely recording the screen is causing some issues on this iPad Air. Um, I was playing back uh, some footage and trying to edit it and it uh, just straight crashed. So um, what I was doing before I had that crash was that uh, I have taken some 4K footage. I, I know most of you are gonna be shooting on drones and GoPros and iPhones and Samsung Galaxy phones, things that are gonna be shooting in 4K. Uh, now, the footage that we had worked with just a moment ago was 1080p, 
uh, which is mostly what I shoot in with my DSLR because I'm shooting with a Canon 60 Mark II, which does not shoot in 4K. Though I really, really like the quality of the video that comes out of it, I do understand that a lot of you are gonna be shooting in 4K. So we're gonna take some 4K footage that I shot using my Mavic Pro uh, when I was out in Maui earlier last year, and I've loaded it onto both of these iPads. So now, not only have I loaded it, but I have been able to uh, put a clip on the timeline, uh, and it scrubs through rather well. Um, the footage itself scrubs through well at also. Um, not a ton of issues, although playback is just a little bit choppy. Um, well, it looks like it's actually being pretty good here. Okay, cool. So actually playback doesn't seem too bad. Okay, so now let's concentrate on this clip here that we have on the timeline. Now the last time I tried to do this, it crashed. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this footage. Now you'll notice there's, an, there's a, a warning here. It says this clip is not fully compatible with this iOS device and may cause crashes and playback issues. But I'm going to throw caution to the wind and, uh, and I'm gonna try and edit this footage and add some color correction. This was shot in a flat profile uh, and we're gonna see, um, we're gonna see how we do. Okay, hitting edit. Yeah, it crashed again. Okay. Um, I think the answer to the question of whether or not the iPad Air can edit 4K footage, the answer is just no. <laughs> um, uh, however, uh, to the question of whether or not it can uh, edit 1080p footage, honestly, it, it wasn't too bad editing the footage uh, from the Canon uh, 6D Mark II with color correction, with text. So if you're shooting in 1080p, especially if you're outputting to Instagram or YouTube, um, 1080p should be fine for you. And I think that the iPad Air, um, iPad Air would, would do, ooh, that's warm. <laughs> uh, okay, but here's, here's the other thing though, is that even though technically using LumaFusion, you can edit this footage uh, in 4K, or rather in 1080p, uh, on the iPad Air, which is um, you know a five, six year old device, I would strongly recommend against it. And the reason for that is not actually the editing, but the fact that while I was editing, even when I didn't have the screen recording on, uh, if I left the LumaFusion app and then tried to return to it, it would have to reload my whole project. Um, I, I really couldn't do anything else and it was very, very slow trying to manipulate assets inside of Dropbox, downloading footage from iCloud, just nowhere near as good as what I'm getting out of the iPad Pro, which is a device that was um, released four or five years later and has considerably more horsepower behind it. So while technically this device will be able to uh, do basic edits and that sort of thing, I'm gonna recommend against it and say that this is probably not the direction that you want to go, even though you can pick these up for pretty cheap. Um, so if you're an LumaFusion editor, here's what I want to know. Let me know down in the comments, what device are you editing on? Are you primarily editing on the iPad? Are you editing on your iPhone? What are you using to edit your footage and how is that going for you? So let me know down in the comments. Go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button to let you know when I have released new videos and I will see you in the next one.